So this is the Sanix Terminator bust that we've placed now onto the Elegoo Mars 2 mono build plate. I've reduced it, as you can see, down to 60% just to get it to fit nicely and allow me to put a raft on on the bottom. Now, if I didn't want to use a raft, I could have got it a little bit bigger, but I, I always feel better using a raft. I've hollowed it out as well, and I've put quite a few holes in the bottom of it. So uh, let's see how this prints. So everything is printed as it should, and we've given it an undercoat with some black, and now I'm just applying some skin tones to it. We're using the Army Painter paints, and I'm just using some Terran flesh initially on a large brush using a wet palette, just to dry brush some of the skin tone over it. Um, now the way I do it is I'll give it a coat or two of the uh, the dry brush skin tone, the basic colour to start with, and then I'll just leave it to dry just to uh, just to allow it to set really before I repeat the process and give it another layer of skin tone. Now there's the first layer gone on, as you can see, it looks fairly nice, uh, fairly well layered and fairly well coated. And now that layer's had a good chance to dry, we're going to give it another layer. Um, you can get the dry brushes from Amazon, and uh, I always use a wet palette. It just makes the paints last a little bit longer, and it also means that if you want to stop in between, then you can, and the paints will stay nice and wet. Now, obviously, a face has got many colours. It's not just a basic skin colour, so I like to mix some reds, some purples, and some lighter and some darker skin shades with some browns and then I'll use a very diluted version of these to just low light really the areas of the face that will be a, a lower colour than the, the main body of the face and these would be the eyes, they'd be the wrinkles in between the eyes, they'd be the crease that runs down from your nose down to your lips, they would be in your neck in between the folds of your neck and just underneath your lips there so as you can see I'm just using that lighter pink colour to uh, to low light. Now don't worry if it starts to look really, really red because what we're going to do after that is we're going to take our base colour again, our skin tone, and we're just going to mix it back in so that the actual skin tone itself and the lower red tone are merged together. And you just keep going really, just keep applying different layers. The more layers the better, to a point, in that the skin really isn't one layer, there's lots of layers to it. Um, just be aware that when you look at the cheeks and the nose and the, the end of the nose and the, the bottom of the chin, and especially on this model where the shoulders are and the highlights where his clavicles, his collarbones are, um, use a lighter skin shade there and that will just show the reflections and where they should be. The darker tones will be in the innermost parts and the lighter parts would be where you would expect the sun to shine on them. So as you can see in between layers there we've allowed it to dry and I'm just changing the the tone really the colour and just giving it another sort of flick across using my dry brush technique. Now again concentrating on the inner parts of where the either side of his windpipe there where it would be darker naturally uh, and um, I've used some brown on this occasion now and I've just used some brown and I've mixed it with the skin colour itself and that's just giving it another kind of texture really if you if you look at skin it's pink it's red it's brown and it's a myriad of mixtures all between and that's what we want to do we just want to make the skin a little bit more varied and interesting to look at you can't really go wrong because if you do think you've gone wrong just go back to your basic skin shade the one that you started off with and give it another coat over and always come back to that always merge the colors in and by doing that you'll get a nice varied skin tone right the way across the body now all the paints that i'm using are army painter paints and i found them to be really really good um, the wet palette again was army painter and the brushes too um, were, were army painter it sounds like an advert for army painter it's not but they are some uh, they do they are some really good uh, really good bits of kit right come into the the whites of the eyes and we don't actually use white here what i'm actually using is a little bit of uh, white but i'm also mixed it with a little bit of blue and uh, use a very fine brush and just try to get it as close as you can. Now if you go over the edges, it really doesn't matter. Don't be afraid. As I said, you can always go over things again and that's the joy of painting really. Take your time with it. A really fine pointed brush and uh, 
get some magnification glasses if you can they can help you and just uh, touch the whites of the eyes there as you can see now like anyone I'm, I'm nervous of eyes but I found um, a picture which I'll show you here and this is the reference picture that I use when I'm doing eyes and it shows you a few things really and if you just look at that and, and just break it down it'll give you an idea of what you need to do to kind of make the eye stand out a little more than just a plain pupil and iris. Now what I always do is uh, I base the eye with uh, a black circle so if, whether their eyes are blue or green there's always an under circle of black. Take your time with this bit. Now it should be a circle to a point, but you've got to imagine that his eyes partly closed. So if you just drew a circle in there, that wouldn't look right. So it's going to be more of a semicircle in there. The top of it is going to be cut off with his top eyelid. There's lots of videos on YouTube about how to do eyes, but I like to do it really simply in that I will put a base black underneath in that semicircle right to the middle to the left or the right whichever way these eyes looking um, but try to get it as rounded as you can and as even as you can and just use some black on a very fine brush and take your time and there we go and that's the first part done and just touch it up if you need to but uh, you know there's got to be a time where you have to stop otherwise you'll slip and ruin the whole thing next we come to adding the the iris color now in Arnie's case it's going to be blue and I'm going to use a couple of blues but I'm just going to give it a base layer first of a circle inside the black circle of his eye now this is really tricky to do so a really really fine brush and just make sure the brush is at a point and you've not loaded too much paint onto your brush and just use the outer black circle to put an inner blue circle in as evenly as you can And as you saw there, I just got some of the excess paint off the brush just so I can concentrate on the smaller areas of the eye. And there we go. Now if we just look at that reference picture that I showed you earlier and you look at that you can see that the inner part of the eye has got some pink and uh, that's what we're going to be adding here so again really fine brush and I've just mixed a little bit of red with a little bit of white just so I've got a, a nice pink colour and I'm going to place a little bit in the inner corner of his eye and then I'm going to use that brush to just drag a line right across his lower lid I'm going to use a little bit of the pink in the other corner the outer corner of his eye as well and uh, that will just show you the lower sort of inner part of the lower eyelid which if you look at the reference picture you can see that there is a quite a pink to be to be seen there and again now it's done and I think if you look at that you can see it's just set the eye off at the bottom now the bottom of the eye is, is pink, but we need a kind of contrast as well. So what we're going to do in a second is just get some black on the brush and do the upper part of the eye. So the upper eyelid, uh, where, the, um, where you've done pink on the lower one, you'll do some black on the upper one. And I'm going to also add a few eyelashes in there. So there you go. You can see that I've added just a line of black and I'm just putting some really really fine eyelashes on there as well now depending on the scale of your model will depend whether you can do this really small faces there's no way you're going to be able to get this kind of detail but on a model this size um, you would be wise to do it now 
So now we're coming to a different kind of blue in the eye. If you look at the eye reference picture, you can see that there's a couple of colors of blue, the darker blue at the top and a lighter blue at the bottom. And that's what I'm gonna to try to replicate here, just to give the eye a little bit of a of depth really. And now it's time for the, the pupil. Fine brush, uh, a very fine speckle of paint. You don't want a big fat glob and just just poke it in there, poke it in the center. This is, this is really hard to do, because if you get this little bit wrong, the whole eye needs to be started again, really. So take your time, deep breath, and just go for it. Okay, it's really important to add a little bit of uh, light into the eye. So I like to get a very fine brush, a very edge of the brush has got some white on and in this case now all I'm going to do is pop a couple of little dots into his eye uh, there and again there and you notice as well I did put a little bit of white just on the bottom of the eyelid just to show a little bit of a reflection mark too and there we go Time to add some hair and we're going to start with the eyebrows. Again, rather than just paint it on in a big blob, just use a small fine brush and as you would expect, eyebrows, just brush them down. Follow the model, uh, it tends to show you where the eyebrows would be and uh, try not to make it too thick and globby. The eyebrow kind of frames the eye and now as you can see as we're going further and the eyebrow is on the eye is starting to look really really nice and I'm really pleased with it and I would say do you know I'm no expert on faces I've always said that um, I'm learning as I go along um, but I just try to find if you use a reference picture watch a few videos you'll pick up some basics and the more you do the better you'll be and it's all about practice. Time now to do the lips and for the lips I'm just using some brown and I'm mixing it with a little bit of the skin tone and I'm just going to uh, use some brush strokes going down and across on the lips um, I'm not just going to put one color on the lips I'm actually gonna put some highlight on it as well but this is my base color so you know again have a look at a reference picture I've used the reference picture from Arnie as the Terminator on my laptop and uh, his lips do look quite brown on that so that's why I'm doing it this way now I'm just mixing a little bit of white with the brown and I'm just going to add a little bit of light reflections on the bottom parts of his lip there. These little touches do make the difference so it's definitely worth doing it and taking the time to do it. Now for the, the hair, so a flat brush this time. Try to get right up to the scalp where the hair joins it and, um, and just brush it on. Time now to move on to the Terminator, the T-800. 
bit and I'm just using some nice silver paint again on a nice big brush and I'm just gonna lather a little bit of it on um, using a small brush to get into the nooks and crannies but I want to make sure that I've got as much of the silver in there as I can now it's good to leave a little bit of the black on the inside just coming through just to add a little bit of depth to it but um, you know you can you can take your time with this bit but you haven't got to be too precise because the where the uh, the outer layers of the silver are going to be you're going to put some blood effects on so just use some nice chrome silver and uh, terminate this bad boy up And there we go, looking nice. Now we need to add some blood effects and I'm using some red paint mixed with some purple and just concentrate on where the blood would be. Look at some reference pictures and again don't overdo the blood. You can ruin this model by just overdoing it. I like to give it a little bit of an outer layer and then I'll add some more depth to it and I will add some uh, little speckles here and there and I'll dry brush bits on or dry brush bits off as well but not uh, not necessarily lathering it all over so sometimes less is more and just take a really fine brush at the end and uh, pull some of that paint out and just make it so it doesn't look like you've just you've just blodged it on there 